Hi, I'm happy to announce that for the upcoming days there are two series that I thought were finished but aren't, which is the floating panel saga which keeps on giving and the corner spike saga which also keeps on giving because I'm still working on back fixing both, th both things and I'm trying my best, okay? So today we'll talk about floating panel because I managed to do quite a significant patch to improve the user experience using the floating panel. Now, currently it has some flaws as you might know about. As an example, let's bring up, you know, Dolphin. And the fact is, if I maximize Dolphin, the floating panel defloats, which is something that a lot of people ask me to remove and I'm not going to remove. That was the whole point. And um, there's an issue though. If we currently, you know, like tile the window like this, or, you know, like this, whoops, like this, well, you can see that the floating panel is not the floating, although you know it's half tiled and if you have two half tiled windows it still won't defloat which looks bad. So what did I do? I wrote some code that instead of checking for maximized windows checks for all windows in the screen that are not minimized and then checks if its geometry intersects the geometry of the panel and in fact the code is simple enough for me to show you. As we usually do here we show the code. Okay, so firstly, there's a new function which is called rect overlap. It takes in two rectangles and just checks whether these two rectangles overlap. And the math is quite boring, actually. It's not super immediately easy to understand, but it's not complex either. I just, you know, copy pasted from Stack Overflow. And then this is actually the important part. So here we have all of our windows. We go over all of the windows. For each one, we get that window like the first, then the second, then we get the geometry of that window and then we check if it overlaps with the geometry of the panel. And if so, we know that the panel is touching a window. And if this happens, then the panel defloats. That's it. That was pretty simple. And it means that now if I just move the window like this, so that it is underneath the floating panel, the floating panel will defloat. And this allows to, for like as an example, TED windows to also defloat the panel. Now, this is particularly important, more important than it might seem. And why is that? Well, the fact that tied windows didn't make the panel to defloat meant that previously, you, you can see that there is currently, whoops, you see there is some margin between the window and the panel. That is actually by design, because if you have a tiled window, then it will look super bad if it uh, the panel didn't defloat and there was no margin. So I had to add some margins at the top of the floating uh, panel to make sure that if you have a tiled window, it still looks good. Now that's not necessary anymore, because tiled windows will make the panel defloat, which is nice which means that I don't need to add new margins to the panel anymore when uh, there's at all, like at all. And this additional margin at the top of the floating panel was giving me some issues. And as, a, as an example, let's open, a kick, let's open up kickoff. You can see that application launcher is not touching the panel. And that is due to the fact that I'm reserving some space above the floating panel. And this was actually a bug. There was a bug report about it and knew about it. What did I do? Now that the panel defloats whenever a window touches the floating panel, we can just get rid of this space above the floating panel. And now the applets actually touch the floating panel, which is nice. What if you want floating dialogues as well? What if you do want kickoff or application launcher of any other widget to be floating? Yes, you're getting that. This was not it, it looks broken, but you will be getting that sooner or later. Thank me. You're welcome, sooner or later. Then there's a secondary benefit, which is, let's bring up this again, let's maximize it. You can see that whenever something gets maximized, you can see that the floating panel defloats and takes space both underneath and above. That is obviously because, you know, I have reserved some space for the panel. I cannot change the amount of space I have reserved for the panel, which means that I have to use both the space above and under the panel when I defloat. But here's the thing. I don't have to reserve any space above the panel anymore, which means that I don't have anymore to expand the float the panel vertically uh, up, 
I, I don't have to do that anymore. I, I still have to defload it underneath. So the latest version of the patch does not gets rid of the top border and just makes the thing defloat a bit a bit under like underneath and to, to the bottom. You know. This means that the ugly margins that you complain about has been halved. Before this it was uh, 16 pixels, now it's just eight because the top eight pixels, I don't need them anymore. And that's it really. You might have noticed that the merge request doesn't seem that simple. It is actually, just look at how short it is. In here, I'm just saying, okay, you don't have any more to reserve the top uh, um, space. Don't reserve any space on the top anymore. In here, I say, check whether you're touching any window. And finally, in here, I'm saying, okay, the float if you're touching any window. And that's it. That was super easy if you know how, how to do that. But now I know and now I did it. Keep in mind that I'm currently trying my best to remove all of the bugs from Kitty Plasma and I'm doing that uh, at a five euros per hour rate currently with my donations. And of course, I'm super happy about just that five euros because, you know, they help me actually do all of these things. Otherwise, I wouldn't have the possibility to. However, that's still quite not enough for me to have a channel that is sustainable and that I can actually work on more and more time. So if you're interested in making KDE Plasma Desktop more stable and reliable through me, then I would appreciate if you could donate anything to me. You can also donate to KDE as a whole. That's a completely different thing. Today, I'm just talking about me. I'm egocentric. Thanks for following and see you tomorrow with another video. I don't know about the corners back probably.